everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear, and we're upstairs at the table like we normally do. We're gonna try something a little different though. We're gonna start putting out videos from my bench downstairs where I, where I normally do all of my work and servicing guns. We're gonna start a line of videos that is going to help you become a more confident, better paintball player when it comes to managing your own gear. How to fix your guns, common problems that I see with equipment, how to fix tanks, loaders, all those things that we always get questions about. Hopefully these videos can help you solve your own problems and not be relying on someone else to do for you. So I'm trying to help you out, make you a more confident, better paintball player. So watch the videos. We're gonna upload all sorts of content. Thanks for watching, ansgear.com. Okay, so I have in front of me a CZR that a customer brought into the retail store. Uh, they purchased it through the retail and they got it out there and they said that it's just balls are just uh, plopping out the end of the gun, just um, rolling out the end of the barrel. So we are going to gas it up or look at it first and then we're going to try to figure out what's going on with it. Let's just see here. So it's missing all of its stuff on the inside, which is not a good thing, especially if someone's trying to return this gun. <laughs> it's got no barrels, no batteries, no parts kit, no manual, no grease, nothing inside there. So that's the first problem. It's played with. You can obviously see the paint all over the front grip here. Paint in the back. High pipe is relatively clean. Um, I know the regs can be a little funny on these ones, just distance out. So I don't know if that is the problem. I'm going to turn it on, but it's not powering on. So I don't think there's a battery in there, but we know that there wasn't a battery in the box. Let's just see. Let's open it up. No battery. So let's put one in. You always got to be careful with a uh, rise, whether a CZR, a maxed rise, um, a standard rise. When you put your batteries in, you always do terminals first down like this and then push the battery in like that. If you do the bottom first, if you put your battery in bottom first and then try to push it down like this, you will damage the connectors or possibly break the terminal. And uh, that's not, not good for anybody. All right, so let's turn it on. Gun is powering up normally. Eyes are reading normally. Um, let's turn the eyes off. Solenoid is activating. I got air in my tank, which is good. So I know not gonna be a problem there. Gassed up, and you can hear it shot. So it is cycling normally right now. Um, now, whether that is at velocity or not, I don't know. Feel a little low. So actually, I will leave it on. I'm just going to go shoot it on the chrono real quick. Go 
grab the chrono. I'm gonna have to grab a barrel because I don't have a barrel. They didn't leave one. So I've got some reball here. I'm just gonna shoot this cocker barrel. You've probably seen this in a lot of videos. And then I've got the chrono. Luckily the station is right next to my desk. You see that? 314. So if we factor in that it's reball, it's usually about 20 FPS higher with reball. So this is, you know, uh, 285. Right? No, it's, yeah. No, 295? I don't know, my math is terrible. 295. Let's try again. 312. It is having trouble cycling right there. Right now it's not doing anything. It's the reball is in the front of the breach down inside of there. If I take this out, it does cycle. So I'm gonna check a couple things. When we saw the velocity was good. We can put that one in there one more time and see what it does. Yeah, it didn't shoot. It just kind of like popped right out the end and now it's not. is going on. So what I'm going to do, actually I'll do it while it's still here. Is I'm gonna pull up something real quick on the computer. The um I'm gonna go to Dai's website real fast and then just pull the information on the dwell setting for this gun czr should be i believe the same as the max or the max drives which um i think it was like 40 steps let's see here looking at it right now configuration mode let's put it into configuration mode real quick. So let's put two up and then shut it down. Then when we turn it on, it should rainbow. Which it did. Alright, so yeah. Well, let's see. Red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. So that dwell is is correct. So I just made sure, in case my counting was wrong, to reset the dwell to 40. I take it out of configuration mode. And then we're gonna look 
at a couple things real quick. We're gonna look at we're gonna look at the reg and we're gonna look at the bolt. So it could be that the bolt is extremely dry and therefore uh, it's having a hard time cycling. Pretty dry. So what I'm going to do is just re-grease the this inner o-ring right here I'm gonna re-grease the inside of the front can re-grease that slide that through and that's nice and smooth through there right now I'm going to change out this inside o-ring right here just with a different 14. Sometimes those can just be problematic that sit inside there. If we've got it open, we might as well. That didn't really help, did it? There we go. Wanna make sure that seat's all the way in. Pushing, kind of pushing it against the inside there to make sure. I'm going to grease up this back section where the tail o-ring sit. on here and then also I'm going to grease right here because this is what's going to slide through this size 14 right here I want to make sure that's not sticking at all that moves way better than it did before and again, that can be the cause if the if there's so much drag on the bolt that it's trying to move and it just can't, the dwell time is going to expire, which is going to reset the bolt. And it was so slow in trying to move in the first place that it just couldn't function, couldn't move. So let's try this again. Let's just put this back in. put our barrel back on so our eye pipe stays seated. Those eye pipes love to move if you um, don't have a barrel in there. Let's put our tank back on. All right, now let's just see dry fire wise. Much better that sounds right there. It's not like struggling to cycle. It really sounded like it was having a hard time moving. Not anymore, that's for sure. All right, so let's put a ball in there. Three oh five. That's upside down to you guys. Three oh five. Let's do another one. Three oh seven. Three oh four. It's pretty consistent. Three oh three. Three oh 
308. That's it. This gun was just having a problem because the bolt was dry. And that's just part of taking care of a gun. You got to take care of it um, while you use it. So that's, that's it. I don't see any other issue. Gun seems to be moving normally right now. Um, I don't, the reg, I mean, we had super consistency with our shots, so I don't think our reg is having a problem. I don't think there's any reg creep or reg bleed or anything like that. Um, so I don't think there's an issue there. One thing I would probably do with this one is check the reg seat just to be on the safe side. And that's pretty simple to do. I'm going to move our snap ring at the bottom right here. I'm going to remove our velocity adjuster out. Remember on these, the velocity adjuster is part of the reg seat, or the reg seat is part of the velocity adjuster, any way you want to look at it. And there's no marks on that at all. So that's fine. Put that back in. Put it roughly where it was. Now I gotta find my, uh, there it is, <laughs> my snap ring. Set that down in there. Make sure that it gets in there. I'm gonna turn that in a little bit. Actually, I'll turn it in a little bit more just so I can make sure I'm not over pressurizing the gun. I'm gonna try this now. 248, so I was just in a little far. That's, what, that's good. We don't want to start out over pressurizing or too high. You always wanna start low. come up just a tiny little squeeze more and then 296 so that's fine I'm gonna leave that there that puts us at just about 280 275 280 which is where you want to be for most fields so that was it a dry bolt causes all sorts of problems so if you shoot a gun like this, a Rise, a Lux, an M series gun, a Max, whatever it happens to be that has a spool set up inside of it, you got to do your maintenance or your gun's not going to work. Hope this helps. See you in the next video. A Max, whatever it happens to be that.